demonstrate a, a second method of which we can heat an organic salt. As per the earlier video, we had diethylether here, very low boiling point, hot water was sufficient. But that's not always going to be the case. We can use a solvent such as ethanol that has a boiling point of about 78, 79 degrees Celsius, and hot water would just be a cumbersome way of doing it. So we have an alternative. We use a what's called a heating mantle. Um, we're going to use it in a similar fashion as the hot water, but we use a little extra equipment. So we have something called a variable transformer, uh, or a variac. It is a variable transformer. It, it adjusts the current that goes to our heating system. It plugs into the wall. And so the camera can see, there is a on, there's an off position. When it's in the on, either 140 or 120, doesn't matter. Uh, we are able to push current through this outlet. Turn it on. That is 0% of current, or this is full current from the plug-in, and that will cause very, very aggressive heating. No heating, aggressive heating, you quite often want somewhere in between. Now we need to get the electricity from there into the heating mantle, and we need a uh, heating mantle cord. Plugs in. It's polar, so you have to make sure that it's oriented properly. I'll turn this off just for safety's sake. Um, these plug-ins are a little different. You may not have come across these before. Uh, when they insert, they only insert in one fashion. And to make connection, you actually have to rotate it. Once it rotates, it has connection. If you just simply plug it in, there won't be a connection here. And turning this on will have no effect at this end. All right, so inserted, clicked, it, it's ready to go. I will continue to stir my solution during this reflux, so I'm going to use our stir. This particular stir has a metal lid or metal cap on it, and it does a very good job of resisting any heat buildup from the bottom of the heating mantle. In the Kelowna lab, and I believe there's several other stirrers in the Vernon lab, this is actually plastic. I don't have one with me now, but we do have clay porcelain uh, tiles, which we like to put on top of the plastic stirs, just to mitigate um, melting of the, the stir top. I have my heating mantle now. Now this heating mantle is specific to this size, and when they're found, you'll see that this is written 100 on the bottom. That indicates that this is appropriate for a 100 mil uh, round bottom flask. We have them of other sizes, of course, for different size reaction vessels. And it is important that this be relatively snug. So using the lab jack, what I like to do is just make sure that there's good thermal contact. If there's not good thermal contact, this will get very, very hot, won't heat this effectively, and these can actually uh, burn out because of the too much of heat buildup. So typically, I like to snug this up, rotate this around, and ensure that, yes, it's a, it's a nice snug contact all the way around the flask as, as best you can. If you find that the heating mantle does not have good thermal contact, it, uh, it's best to go check the other heating mantles of the same size, different uh, manufacturing batches, or just simply the age of the heating mantle can cause them to change shape a little. You, may, you will have to find one that fits the flask that you have, otherwise the heating will be ineffective and you can damage your heating mantle. My system's ready to go. You'll see that the condensation or the uh, the condensing liquid water is still going through my flask or my uh, my condenser. It's clamped properly. It's stirring. It's open to the environment. Turn on, and knowing that this is a low boiling solvent, 30, 30, 36, 37 degrees. Uh, I'm not going to heat aggressively. It won't take a lot of energy. As was illustrated with the hot water, it doesn't require a lot of energy to boil the solution. Just an estimate, I'm going to turn it to 50, halfway, and I'm going to watch it closely. Once reflux starts, I may have to adjust this downwards, most likely. Other solvents you might have to adjust up because of its uh, higher boiling point, but in this instance, I, I feel 40 to 50 would be adequate. Uh, but of course, I'm going to keep an eye on this until it starts to boil and ensure that I'm not heating too aggressively. So it has been a few minutes. Our solution is now boiling. It does take a little while for this, uh, this mantle to, to pick up enough heat. It's not quite as uh, immediate as immersing it in hot water. But now that it's boiling, I want to keep a close eye on it to make sure that the reflux doesn't get away on me. 
right now, um, you can see that it's dripping probably two or three drops per second. Nothing magic about that, but it seems to be nice and controlled. It's clearly boiling. I know the temperature to be 38 degrees Celsius at this point. Yet it's not boiling so rapidly that I've got my condenser totally full with hot, hot vapor. Uh, at this point, we can, uh, we, we're, we've got a nice stable temperature. This is, is robust. We can leave it sit uh, for 20 minutes, half an hour, uh, to an hour, quite easily. Uh, and we're, we can be assured that our reaction mixture is at a constant temperature of 38 degrees Celsius. Disassembling this, as any uh, apparatus goes, you do all the steps in reverse. So assuming that our reaction has, has gone its course, we decided, well, now we're going to work up and try to isolate our product. Simply off, dial it back, and we can drop the heat source. Now, this solution, as I said, is 38 degrees Celsius. It's not terribly hot. However, it is still very close to its boiling point. I'm not going to rush this. I'm going to let this cool down a little bit to, to uh, maybe room temperature, at least until the active boiling is gone before I do anything with it. Now you can see this, this is sat several minutes and our solution is, is quick boiling. I am ready to, to work this solution up. So I'll turn off the stir. I can start to disassemble our equipment. Now, uh, I will turn off my condenser. All right. Done. I can remove my condenser. Typically, the, the, the ground glass joints, it's quite snug. Sometimes you get a little vapor in there. All you need to do is a small twist. It comes out. And I stop for my organic solvent. Again, trying to keep the smell down in the lab for everyone. There's my solution. I can remove this, put it out of harm's way. Put it in my cork ring. Place it up here. Now, this is, <laughs> this is probably the most complicated system uh, or portion of this whole set, setup is how do I get water out of the condenser? Now, there's only really one good way of doing it without removing or without getting water all over the, the table. I ensure that the water is off, of course. I disconnect at the spigot, the water source, and I hold that hose up. And you can see when I hold the hose up, hold it vertically, the water drains quite naturally, easily. Gravity helps me, water's out of the condenser comes off, sometimes they're a little snug, and I'm good to go. Now, the condenser itself has had water inside the column. There's not much we can do about this. We can't put these columns away wet. Uh, it's impossible to dry this, and quite often uh, they'll still stay wet during the entire term. Um, on occasion, you will get organic material inside of the condenser. To, do, to remove that hot soapy water or a bit of acetone. But in most instances, uh, it will just be organic vapor. If there's organic solids there, it will look white and chalky and will be need to be cleaned. But as, uh, as you can hopefully see, that this is, rel this is clean and there is no indication of organic material. Another <laughs> quick cheat, you can actually look down the length of the column and because the glass on the inside is very, very clean, you see very high reflectivity. It almost looks like a mirror down the column. And if it looks good that way, you don't see any white chalky residue, you can go back into your container, and it's good for another day. That concludes the, the reaction portion of this so-called experiment. Uh, this is often followed by isolation of the material, or what we generally refer to as a workup, and that will be the subject of another video.